West, and I love talking about the Jets, and I'm here to talk about Week 4, where the Jets win 24-20 to over the Pittsburgh Steelers in the return of Zach Wilson. Jets fans, let's all be clear. This was a stressful game, a horrifying game, and a game that ultimately I don't truly think the Jets deserved to win, but we did. And so at a base level, I'm happy. I'm happy. An exciting last-second win for the New York Jets secured with a touchdown run by a young rookie and then really sealed with an interception, the second interception of the day, of LaMarcus Joyner, right? Those are exciting things. And while I can say, yeah, we played poorly, which we did, we really, really did. At the same time, I am happy that we won this game. And all of Jets fans can agree on one thing, which is no matter how you feel about this game, this is what we have all wished for. And we cannot complain about it. And you might ask, what the hell do I mean? And I mean competitive games. I came into the season begging on my hands and knees for the Jets to start playing competitive games. I want games where you get to the fourth quarter and you're still in it, where you have hope late in games, where you either can win it or at the very least make it interesting. Credit to the Jets. They've had both of their wins be interesting ones. And now I say the Jets played poorly in this game, and I do truly attest to that. I thought the play calling was awful in this game. Uh, so many first down runs up the middle, so many second down runs up the middle when it would be second and long forcing Zach Wilson in his comeback game to make long throws on third and long where the defense knew exactly what was coming. Uh, couple that with offensive line play that was genuinely as bad as I've ever seen it. Plays where receivers forgot how to catch a football and in some cases actually forgot how to run a route, and I'll talk about that in due time. And the defensive line, again, being a bit of a problem. It got better. It got better as the game progressed, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. But that being said, to begin the game, the defensive line once again was non-existent. And the Jets actually would get on the board first in this game. They'd have a 10-point lead in this game and would end up blowing it to be down by 10 and then make a different type of comeback because the New York Jets, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, that's, the, that's beside the point. The Jets get on the board first. Greg Zerline, field goal after a drive, nothing too shabby there. Then, second quarter, boy oh boy, after this play, I really thought the Jets were just going to run away with the game, and they very didn't. Early in the second quarter, Philadelphia special, Zach Wilson gives it to Garrett Wilson, he gives it to Braxton Berrios, he just with a little pass over to Zach Wilson, nails the gritty, and the Jets take a 10 to nothing lead. And at that moment, you think, all right, the offense is going to steamroll. If this turns into an offensive shootout, I still, I trust in the Jets. And then it wouldn't be an offensive shootout because the Jets would not smell the end zone again until the back half of the fourth quarter. Ostensibly, this was not a good game for Zach Wilson. 18 of 36, 252 passing yards, one touchdown, a receiving touchdown, and a pair of INTs. That looks bad. That's an awful completion percentage. A pair of interceptions is not good. How many times did a ball hit a receiver in the hands and then they would drop it? How many times? I, I can think of at least five or six off the top of my head and one play the first interception for Zach that look I've seen a lot of different reaction to this a lot of people said hey that was a bad play by Zach Wilson that was awful very mad at him other people were like yeah it wasn't a great play but you know he's knocking the rust off it happens we still won the game I am in neither of those camps because I don't know if it was a good throw or not because Elijah Moore just stopped on the route just around the 10-yard line, instead of cutting in and going to the end zone, he just stops. He just stops running. He doesn't try to track it. He just stops dead in his tracks, and it's picked off. I don't know if I can put that on Zach Wilson. Maybe it would have been a bad throw. I'm not going to know that because the receiver just gave up. The second interception was high, and I'm not going to deny that it was high. Still hit great. The second pick was a high throw. It was, and it hit Conklin in the top of his hands, but distinct few words in that sentence which was it still hit him in the hands and you gotta you gotta catch that you've gotta get that he doesn't it is nearly just put perfectly in the hands of a Steeler defender and they would get seven more points out of it and at that point you really really start to lose hope now obviously I'm not mad at Zach because there is a bit of rust that he had to kick off and also the fact that there were a lot of just bad plays all around. The offensive line was terrible. The receivers did not help him all that much. The tight end certainly did not help him all that much. The play calling was bad, right? And the play calling I will touch on now because the play calling on offensive and defensive and in the and it, with Robert Sal, I will also say, if the Jets would have lost this game 20 to 10, I think you could have genuinely said, it's time to fire everyone. 
And you might freak out for me saying that, and that's a valid response, but hear me out, right? Because if the Jets have this game where the play calling was that bad on offense, that bad on defense, where they were so undisciplined, I want to say it was uh, Carl Lawson to end the first half with just a needless hit, a needless hit that led to three more points for Pittsburgh, right? There were so many needless hits in this game by the Jets, just getting cheap shots in for no apparent reason, where all you're doing is hurting the team. It was on big third downs too, and it was driving me up a wall. And if you lose that game with those kind of plays, on top of the fact that you could not in-game adjust for a rookie quarterback in Kenny Pickett, who was not projected to start this season going into it, and up until very recently, probably shouldn't have. Like, I'm amazed that he's starting the season. I thought he was a total ride-the-bench-for-a-year quarterback. And if you couldn't have game-planned around him as a defensive specialist, as a head coach, right, who was allowed to more or less pick every player he wanted for the defense, and you couldn't stop Kenny Pickett? I'm sorry, but that is nearly fireable in my eyes. And the play calling in this game, I already mentioned it, but man, oh man, was it awful. Just run, run up the gut twice, and then it's third and a long time to throw a pass, and it was bad. It was a miracle the Jets were able to pull this game off. So, about halfway through the fourth quarter, the Jets are driving. Wilson, after just whiffing on a pass, I think it was Brees Hall, who would actually have the game-winning touchdown in this game, but just whiffed on a short, easy dump-off. He was clearly not feeling it towards the end of this game. And, I mean, who can blame him? The, the team around him was, you know, not giving him much to inspire confidence. So that was a lot of fun. But eventually, Bullet hits Corey Davis. He walks in. The Jets make it a three-point game. And then the Steelers are driving. And they're driving, and it's just no resistance whatsoever. And then tip ball by Sauce Gardner. Michael Carter gets it, and by a miracle, the Jets once again have the ball in this game. They start driving. It was second and goal, and Brees Hall, fighting for it, reaches out, just barely gets enough, and the Jets take a lead in this game. And granted, they really did try to uh, blow it on the preceding like 16 seconds by giving up a big play for the Steelers and allowing them to actually take a Hail Mary shot, but... Joiner again, his second pick of the day, and by a miracle, the Jets win 24-20. So offensively, I'm not going to say Zach had a good game, but I will say that he was not awful. The two picks were just not his fault. He's knocking the rust off. I want to give him at least three games before we really start to get critical of him. Uh, Brees Hall was great. He's solid. Had six, or 17 carries, 66 yards. Had the game-winning touchdown. Nothing too shabby there. Uh, with Wilson back, the Moore and Wilson connection was very much back in effect. That was very nice to see. Moore has been pretty much dead the first couple of games this season. Three receptions, 53 yards, nothing too shabby there. Corey Davis also had a nice big day. Got a touchdown, five receptions, 74 yards, nothing too shabby there. Garrett Wilson was not used a ton, but he still wound up with 41 yards, which is not awful. Uh, Conklin was a disaster, but still somehow had over 50 yards in this game. So going into next week, I'm begging the Jets, just feed Moore and Wilson the ball. The other Wilson. Defensively, the Jets were not great, which has sort of been the story of this season. I do find it very fascinating that the Jets have spent the past, like, what, half decade or more with just awful corners and a solid, or great in some cases, defensive line, just to finally get an elite set of corners to put out on either side, and then have the uh, or defensive line completely fall apart. Sauce Gardner was great today. He did make a mistake and almost allowed a touchdown, but it was out of bounds, so his mistake was not costly. But he played great, had a couple of really nice plays, had the, obviously, I want to say it was like a 50-yard, it would have been a 50-yard reception that he was able to go up and break apart. He also had a nice big play on the final, pl or on the ensuing touchdown for Michael Carter that would end up for the Jets, you know, going down and scoring the game-winning touchdown. Sauce played great. Drain Johnson also played great. Wasn't in there a ton because we're still using this dumb defensive line rotation. Why are you not just picking your best four players and letting them harass the quarterback? So hopping back to corners, Gardner was fantastic. Joyner was solid, had a pair of interceptions, which is obviously impressive. Uh, I wasn't in love with him in coverage, but he was not, he didn't give up any horrible plays, so I'm not going to be critical of him. <sighs> so one of those things that sounds kind of weird, it's like, because of how bad the Jets have been for so very long, I kind of forgot that football games are very dramatic, 
and stressful because I just haven't been used to that. And this is very strange. So the Jets prepare to return to MetLife next week to face the Miami Dolphins, who very well could be without Tua Tagovailoa. And if they don't have Tua, that would be in favor of the Jets. And I'm not saying that as a happy note, because what happened to Tua with the injury on Thursday night, all of the nightmarish thing that happened last Sunday is awful. The Dolphins should definitely face repercussions for that. I'm not saying that as a happy note. I'm saying the Jets could have an advantage if Tua is out, and if they have that, they really would need to capitalize on it. But absolute misnomer, do not think that for a second I am celebrating a potentially career-altering injury. I'm just stating a fact. So that's at 1 o'clock next Sunday, and I'll be here afterwards to talk about it. But that's all I have to say for the week. So thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day, and as always, go Jets.